I will, I will upload this onto the YouTube channel so you guys can have access to it. But we all know how some of you guys are, right? Not very disciplined like that. All right, so let us get to work. Let me share my screen. So, you are at your desktop, <clears throat> for example, yeah? My desktop coming up. All right, so you're on your desktop here like this. And you want to start to use the, the database right away. So, I want to focus really on three ways to pop it, to create a database one, then populating a database table. So, creating a database file, and then creating the tables because you must have data in the tables to actually work a database, yeah? So for me, I start off here. Access for me is right here. Some of you might need to go to um all programs, various stuff like that, right? So here's access for me. And the first thing that happens is that you're asked right away to file a database. If I were to open, for example, Microsoft Word, I could just start to work right away. Let's get on a blank document and I start to work. So you're encountering the first thing as likewise a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet, same thing. Click on blank, start to work right away. Same thing with a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint, same thing. You can start to work in almost any application right away. But with a database, uh -uh, already the strictness of the program kicks in. Let me close all of these, right? So already the strictness of the program kicking in. So the first thing you have to do, if I even say blank database, I have to create it, right? So we're going to call this database. We're going to call it now. Yes, yeah, since it's election time, let's call it vote um, DB class, vote database class, right? Vote database class. That's what we're calling it. Vote database class. That's what the DB means. And then this little um icon right here is to select where I want to save the class, to save the database. So in other words, notice now, I must create, where we're going to put the database, name of the database, I must put all of those things in before we start to work. Okay, I start to work, then click save. Nope. So remember, guys, this is not difficult. It's just a matter of the program being a strict program. So I'll put this on my desktop. So I'm going to put this on my desktop. For you guys, I think you should put your all your SBA in one particular folder. All right, so go to my desktop again, and I'm going to create a new folder. And then, let me see now. Click election class. Open. Open that, and I'm going to save it. All right, so this is the name. Vote database class, ACC, DB, fine. So that's where I save my database. I'm saving it and I click create. And then the database stuff opens up now where I can start to do my work. So you see, I had to actually go through some steps before. As I say, the class is recorded so you can always go back to it. So first thing is first. I can't do anything with this database. Here's it automatically as a table for me. That's where you're working in a database. You're working in a table. Microsoft Word, you use pages. Excel, you use sheets. PowerPoint, you use slides. In a database, you use tables. Right? That's what, that's what you call the version of a page, yeah? Tables, right? Because the rule of a question. Let me ask you guys this. Let me see how well you're thinking. All right? In a... Sorry, someone is calling me one second. In a class, in a database, sorry, uh, you have tables and so forth. In a Word document, what would you what would you call the smallest part of a Word document? The basics of it. You call what? Each date, each Word document have a what? A page. You type pages. I stop going all over the place and so on. And then the page makes a document. In a database, however, what you find is this rule. You have what is called fields. And then the fields make records. The records together make tables. And the tables make a database. In a spreadsheet, you go in from the smallest input, you can have 
columns and rows. Columns and rows make cells. Cells make a worksheet. The worksheet combined make a workbook. So you have that construct in a spreadsheet. So in a field, rather than just telling you right now, as we go through it, you'll see what fields are so you can relate to it, yeah? Any questions so far, anybody? Anybody have any questions so far? Excuse me, sir. Yes, Miss Perkins. Sir, can you do database on a phone or you have to do it on a laptop or a computer? You have, you have to do it on a PC. I don't right, have sir. any app on a phone. It's a robust program. So it tends not, they tend not to be any apps for it. The closer I've come to see, see the database is, is not, I don't have a database app and so on. They tend to have a laptop or a desktop computer like what we have at schools, at school, right? That's what you have to have. There's no app for that. All right. Okay. And I got some updates for you guys. Um, I have to get your SBAs because I have to submit the grades in by the 14th or the 15th of March. Somebody else have to get them, mark them, and submit the grades. So we don't have much time. But anyway, let's continue. So, guys, feel free to just raise and ask a question or just unmute and ask questions. I really prefer when you ask questions as opposed to make me continue and then to find out later on down the line you don't understand, right? So let's start to get some work in. So there are three ways we can start to populate a database, all right? One of the first things that you need to know is to import data because you already have a spreadsheet with some data. I sent you a video link in your WhatsApp group how to set up your spreadsheet to send to a database. So you have to end up typing all that over again, yeah? So pay attention to that video link. It's very short, guys. It's like five to eight minutes, very short. And a lot of it is me kind of explaining details to make sure you understand why and how. So let's get into this, yeah? So we're going to import some data into this database, all right? So first step is to, to import data from a spreadsheet, external data, all right? So you click on the menu option up here that says external data. Um, guys, I need for you to give me some advice regarding this. Does you um does it help when I use my mouse pointer like this or the other way before it's fine? You can see it clearly. Can you track the mouse where it's going? Yes, sir. You want us to want me to use this or you want me to go the way that was way before? Could you track it easier the way easier the way before or like this? This one, sir. This one. Okay, all right. So let me go back here. So normally we are at here when we're using database. This is where we are. So to start to import spreadsheet data or from anywhere at all, your first place you go to is external data. That's where you go to. Now you have different categories here, all right? So or different clusters of icons. You have one here that says export. You have another that says import and link. This is where we're going to work, right? So the one that says new data source, I click on that. And then I say from file. So when I select from file, if you notice right here, it says Excel. So the green X thing here, all right, says so import from Excel spreadsheet. Let me admit this person in. All right, so I click new source file, new data source, click on that. Then I go to from file and I select Excel. The screen keeps coming up, so I have to kind of move it away, right? So I select Excel. Click on that, and now I go searching for an Excel file I created right before class began so we could actually work with it, yeah? So let me go select Browse. So now I go searching for the file. So usually, this is why it's important you save your files somewhere that you remember. All right? So let me go looking now, right? So I think I said vote for database, yeah. Or four vote database here, yeah? something like that. So here's the file right here. So yeah. So I double click on that. I double click on the file. So the, so the file come up here in this little window here now. The file come up. And I click OK. The file name comes up. Now here is the file. Let me show the file that I created originally so you can see it for yourself. This is the Excel file I created originally. We don't let this file. All right, so this is the Excel file I created. Notice what I did. I made sure the first row, the very first row, have the field names. 
that I want to use. The very first row, ID, first name, last name, age, email, district, town, parish, etc. If you notice again, how I separate the address, I don't put the address in one cluster or in one column, in separate columns. It's the same thing when you're filling out your forms online. When you're filling out forms online, signing up for anything, let me click this, for example. And can I find a form online? Um, let me go yeah, that's anywhere. Um, www. Let's say Yahoo. Yahoo.com. All right. And let me see if I can find something here. Sign in. I don't want to sign up there because I don't have my Yahoo password. Um, email. So I can show you. No, I'll go straight to my email. I mail plus. Um, try it for free. No, I want something to sign up. But where's somewhere that I I don't have no registration? Um, find. I want to find a website. I don't have my. Um, yeah, www dot paypal. I guess my PayPal account is PayPal sign up. Yeah, PayPal sign up. Uh, let me see. Sign up now. Just going to show you guys this. So, okay. Jamaica, get started. Cool. Now, when they're signing up, oh, jeez. I forgot to go through all this. Right now. All right, fine. Uh, you, this one. I want to get to this part where the addresses are. Existing account? No. Close that. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, where can I go? CNET? I want to find a website that may not sign up anything yet for. www.cnet. Uh, I'm at, I'm registered on so many websites. It's not funny. .cnet.com. Uh, I want to sign up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Hurry up now. The computer, I guess the, this thing here collapsed that. Where do I sign up for this thing now? I think you guys, I think you guys were familiar with this one. They're signing up for something. They always ask you to put your address. You're, you're filling out an, an address thing. You always put tone different from parish different from zip code if you're in the US and so on they're always separate I think it's going to be difficult for me to map this out right now because most places most places um, your password whatever whatever sign up uh, This the, the interface is kind of different right now for most of them right so let's go back to this yeah this is not going to work for me right now but anyway what I'm saying here is this when you're filling out for, um, forms, the address especially, usually each window is separate. First name separate from last name, separate from town, separate from district, separate from state or parish. You must always have them separate. Don't put your living. You don't live at Mil you live at Milford Road, Orchard Saint Anne in one column or one field. Don't do that. You should always separate them. All right. So going back to the database thing now. So this is what the, what the spreadsheet look like that we're going to um, import. This is what we're going to import. All right. So going back here to the database. Um, here we are. If you notice, in the very first row, it has the headings of the columns that I want to use as field names. So I'll select this option that says, first row contains column headings. I always want to check this box. So I click on that, right? And then I click next. Mm -hmm. Usually in this situation, most of these fields, you will want them because this is just selecting which fields you want to import, which fields you don't want to import. In most cases, you want all of them, yeah? So we'll just click next. Then this one is also about primary key. The primary key is that unique field. Now guys, remember, you know, I'm assuming some of these terms are not so foreign to you because you did them when you're in grade 10. I'm hoping you remember them. A primary key 
is a key that identifies each record uniquely. For example, if you have a license plate, each license plate is registered to each car, a bank account number, likewise. Registered to each individual, that unique identifier that nobody else will have. We can have the same last name, same first name, same date of birth even. But what is unique, that's what the primary key is, to each, each record entered in. So I select, choose my own primary key. Usually the computer is by default select the right one for you. Or if it's not, if not, you can go down and select whichever one you want here in the pull down list. Then you click next. And by now we're wrapping up. So I can select this and put um let's say voters. Yeah, we'll put voters. Election time ago. So we'll put voters. All right. Finished and click close. Then you see over here, so another table shows up that says voters. And I double click on it. You see the same table comes up like what I had in the spreadsheet. I, let's see, can I zoom this up? Um, I should be able to zoom it up. Let me home. And let me move this out of the way. Make sure you can see it's a little bit better. And the font size. Yeah, that's where I have to go. Font size, let us say about 18. A little bigger. But let me see if I can go a little bigger than that. Let me go 22. All right. So hopefully everybody can read this clearing, all right? So this is the same spreadsheet that we had before and so on. Same spreadsheet. And I'll open it back so you can see it, right? Wide result. So the same spreadsheet data. Let me move this out of the way. Same spreadsheet data that we had before. However, there's something that you're going to notice. Oops, that's not what I wanted. There's something you're going to notice with this data. All right, this is what we had. CD, whatever, whatever, and so forth, right? Over here, you find that it is sorted differently. Whenever you import your data, your computer will always, let me say that's always, will most of the time reorder the rows by the primary key. It will resort the data. So if it's not in the same order, don't worry. As you had it in the spreadsheet, don't worry. It's the same. That is exactly what should happen. It will reorder the sequence in which the data was entered originally, even if you enter the data manually. All right. So this is what it is, right? This is the data that's entered. So whenever you import a table, the next thing you have to do is to go and make sure your data types are okay. To do that, to select the right data types, and data types are important because if you don't select the right data types, you are going to have issues. So I'm going to backtrack again. Data types. Let me ask you this, right? Can you guys tell me some data types that you know? Let's see. You're sending messages over WhatsApp. So tell me some different types of data you send over WhatsApp. Let's use WhatsApp as an example. Text. You send text. Thank you very much. What else you send? Voice notes, which are audio files, or it can be music. You can send links, like link to a YouTube video or some file or some website. You can send text. You can send links, hyperlinks. You can send audio. You can send videos. You can send pictures. So those right away are five different types of data you can send over WhatsApp alone. So when you hear data type, think about kinds of data. Data is not always the same because data include pictures, images, sound. I say images, I mean still pictures like when I want to take on your pose on somebody's car pretending it's yours. Your pose about to take a selfie. That is a still image. Movies and so on and video clips, those are what we call moving pictures. All right? If you actually break down a movie to the smallest, what they call frame, it's actually pictures taken in quick sufficiency like 30 frames per second. You mean you take like 30 pictures in one second. So when the picture is rolling across on the film, it looks like the images are moving. Yeah, man, that's how it looks. It's actually a lot of pictures taken one behind the other. That's where you get moving pictures. 
All right. But anyway, let's go to this now. I can get an idea of data types for database, right? So we'll go over here and we select over, we make sure you add the home option, not external data or database tools or so on or help. Make sure you add the home option and then this little triangle depends like thing on it. Click on that and then now we get to the area we start to select data types. So here now, ID, short text is fine. Last name, short text is also fine. So over here we have the field names and on the middle of the data, data type and the third column here, description. For your purposes, um, I want to require that you fill in the description because I want to make sure you know what you're doing. So for example, ID unique per person. All right, uh, first name, first name of each person entered. Same thing for last name, age, age when person was registered. Email, email address, address of entrant. Uh, where the person lives and so forth and so on. That's really easy, right? But what I, want, what I want to focus on is the data type. So ID should always be text. Why? Even if ID is a set of numbers, it should always be text. Why? You will do, you will not do any calculations with text. Numbers, you have short text, you have long text. Now short text, if you notice guys down here, you have 255 characters with short text. See down here? 255 down here, so right? If I were to select long text, yes, yes, yes. I want to change it, yeah. If I were to select long text, see? Different story now, right? There's no limit now, all right? But let me put this back to short text because I'm a primary key. I don't want to mess around with it too much, all right? Put them at the primary key there, so. All right, so then now we'll come here. So let's show this one again, long text. See, gone again. So short text means you can enter up to 255 characters. That normally means that you can enter, you can touch the keyboard 255 times. Spaces are included. Symbols are included, like plus, minus, subtract, divide, all those different stuff are included. Numbers and letters are included. It's a character. Now we get to age. Age is a number. Full stop, right? And this now we're going to do calculations with. So anything that is not text, more than like, like numbers and so on, you more than likely will do calculations with, right? So age is a number. Email. What do you think email should be? Let me ask you guys. Email should be what data type? Look at all the different data types you have here. So what should email be? Anybody want to take a guess? Hyperlink. Hyperlink because when you click on it, it will take you to a particular website or something. Tone, district, and so on, they're also short text. All right, so I should put in another one, you know. Let me put in another one here, so. No, I, mean, no, I don't want to do that, you know. Give myself more work. I mean, I'll just do it because you might need to know. All right, insert rows. Let's put in, put in DOB, yes, all right? DOB, date of birth. The data type for that would have been date and time. All right? That's what it would be more than likely. Date and time. Just to give an idea of some of, the, some of these data types. This is in your notes that I sent that you have in your Google Classroom. It's also in your textbook. Every single data type here. All right, so... After you go and check sure to make sure all the data types are correct, based upon what you imported, now you can save the table, save the table, and you can close it. And then now we are done with that one. Close that. So now we have voters, and this is our first table that we did. Let us say we're creating one from scratch, right? A table from scratch. All right, we're going to do that now. And then we're going to populate that table by using a form. And then we're done for a little bit. 
and then now we start off again about 15 minutes after we give a life a short break we're gonna finish before 11 o'clock this session and then queries will even be shorter because queries is easy queries is, is well to me it's all easy but we'll see how it goes all right good morning late buds all right okay so let us get going again right so what if we want to create a table from scratch no, we have to use data types more, more, what should I say, more frequently, right? So let's go here and select create, creating a table from scratch. So the menu option, go to create. And we have three options. We say table design, table, and sometimes have some like a wizard or support and so on. Uh, table is always best done by design view. So, let me put in this. Let me example. Um, mem ID. Go and use that one, right? Short text is fine. Unique again to each. Oh, to each person. Just give you an idea of that, right? Description. And let me see now. Um, I want to use this now. Let me say transportation. Transport. And for this one, data type, I'm going to use currency because we're going to talk about how much a person paid for transportation. All right. Next one is, let me see, number, number of persons, underscore of underscore persons. You can use spaces in field names, but I try not to. It tends to give some problems sometimes. Number of persons, that's number as well. I'll put some description here so you can have an idea what it is. Descriptions are optional. As you can see, it's optional. All right. Um, persons who were taken to class by main member. All right, the next one, last field number going to use is number of products we can't use now. Um, what data we can't use now? Let's see what data we can use. Uh, date of entry. Date of entry, right? Date, you, date of entry. So we use date again. So we can use date and time here. Date and time. Yes. This may have another one we have to use too. I have another one we have to use. Um, date person came, and I just saw another one. Um, I don't know how should I put this one? Um, citizen, citizen, yeah, citizen. So I put that right, and then for this one, we're going to put yes or no, yes or no, because this one you guys might be curious as to what this one is yes or no, all right. And before I close the table, I should actually have a primary key. Every table should have a primary key. All right. So I'm going to put mem ID up here and put on this little key symbol. When I click on it, notice what will happen. Over the over to the left of it, right here. So it's one like a key come up. When I press on it, the key thing comes up. If I click back on this, it comes off. Right? So by setting this a primary key, it means that this particular field will contain unique identifiers for each record. We're going to come to that right now as we finish this. Then I'm going to save this table as... Don't ask now. Um, we call it voters. Call it um, participants. Okay, right? So we have two tables now. See the two tables over here? Participants and voters. Of the voters table open here. All right. So let's start to work this through now. Get the nitty gritty of it. We said before that a database is comprised of fields that make up records, that make up tables, that make a database. All right. Cool. Let's explain that right now. Right. Here is a field. This is one field. This is another field. All of these headings up here indicate fields. So the fields are like the columns, right? Each field will contain the smallest entry 
for, for, e for every object entered in the table. So I feel so everybody will have first name, everybody will have a last name, everybody will have an ID, everybody must have an age, email and so on. So I feel really contains the smallest element for each person or object entered in a database table. So let me put that in and I'm going to send this to the WhatsApp group. Fields. Um, smallest. Um, entry. Of each object or person entered in a database table. All right, that is what a field is. All right, so let me make some space here and tab this as well. Okay, no, just put a space, space is fine. Or oh, records. What's a record really? Record tab. Record space. All right, so what's a record? Let me tell you what a record is. A record is a row. A record is a complete entry about each object or person. So for example, this is a field was everybody have last name. So for Anne Brown, A B003. All right. Um B is in band zero, B is zero zero five. Everybody have a have a first name. So the field says everybody is either Anne or Band or Carol or Derek or Chris or Ludlow or Morris or Maverick or Zippy. Everybody has to have a first name. Or in this case, let's say an address. Everybody lives somewhere with a Larimer's Mason Town Priory. Limpy Pool, Great Pond, Casa Maria, Cascade, Lilliput, Finky. Everybody lives somewhere. So a field is a is an entry, the smallest entry about each or one section of each entrant in the table. Now a record is a complete entry about each entrant. So remember, every entrant, one piece about every entrant. Field. Record a complete entry about each entrant. For example, um, Anne Brown, which her ID number is AB003, date of birth, nothing entered there. She's 50 years old. Her email address is annb at yahoo.com. Lives in Larimas, Christiana Trelawney. That's what it is. So that's her complete entry. Another record is KM002, which is the ID number for Chris McKenzie, Date of birth is empty, right? 21 years old, whose email is chris at mackenzie.com, great pond, St. Anne's Bay, St. Anne. Fair enough. So that gives an idea about that complete entry. So a record is a complete entry. So a record is a row. A field is a column. But remember, if you're asked what is a field, don't say a column. It is a entry one piece of information, one bit of information about every person or object entered in a table. One piece of information. So it's a first name or last name or age or date of birth or the parish where you live or the, the, the town or something like that. A record is about one individual or an object. An object because it can be about, so Mark, it's about goods. Corned beef, mackerel, flour, um rice soap powder chicken so in a supermarket it's about the, the, the items you're selling that's what's the objects car mark can be about cars the year the car the make the model toyota camry 1992 whatever the case may be so that's just the objects as well so a record is a complete entry about a person or an object all right okay that's what a record is cool so let me enter that information now um, a record is a complete entry about a person or object in a database table. Cool. All right. What is a table? A table is a collection 
of related fields. All right. All right. And a database. Um, is a collection of related tables. That is what that is. So let me do this. I send that out into your WhatsApp group so you all can have that little bit of information already. All right, cool. Now let us continue. All right, cool. Let's get going. All right, so this is one table and this is another table. Just like this table is empty though. We don't enter anything in there yet, right? So a shortcut way to do this now, we can copy and paste. But you have to pay attention, people. You have to open both tables first. As it is, you can know because the table is up here open. If I have to close them, I can go out of here so I click on this X right here. So click the X right there. So click on it, close that one, close that one. So to copy and paste, I have to open both of them, right? So double click on that one, the participants table, double click on the voters table, and I is ready to go. All right, so let oh start the copy and paste now. So I go here and I at the field name, point of the field name, my mouse changes to like a down arrow pointing down. Click on it, it highlights everything. I select copy. I go to participants, I do the same thing. Click on the name, down arrow, and then I click paste. And then I said, you're about to paste nine records. Are you sure you want to paste these records? Yes. Whenever the database asks if you're sure, because I tell you, say, once you do this, to try to undo it, you see, there's no undo, you know. You have undo buttons there, but they don't work. When they say database is easy, it's just a strict program, but it's very, very easy. It's just strict, so you have to pay attention to the rules. All right, let me set this up now to the fonts bigger again. Those are about 18 or 22. 22, you're about. All right. So let's put in some random numbers. This, you know. So this person paid um, about five grand. Hold on, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, jeez, escape. So I give a problem you know, because I made one mistake, yeah. All right, so five, hold on, 5,000. Oh, granny. Hold on, go over here, so 5,000. Widen this column out so we can see the number properly. 5,000, delete this out. All right, cool. Now, a person came along, three, delete that. Data of entry, you know, I'm put up with this too much, you know. Let me click this and we set the data. The seventh. Um, and then citizen, yes, a person is a citizen. So with this no, yes or no, to put that tick in the box, me the person is a citizen. If there's no tick in the box, me the person is not a citizen, right? This one, BZ, let's see this person pay about 3,000. Right? Carried about 50 people. Data of entry, go and choose, let's say, the first. And not a citizen. So we're going to go through randomly and put in this data, right? Oops. You see, the man is not about this thing here. Yeah? 1,000. All right. Uh, what else? But get this one this one because I'm not going to enter all of these, you know. I'm not going to waste my time entering all of this. But you got this is how I'm going with this. Right? Let's say 10. 000. That's basically what I'm saying. You can just go through and populate as much as you want. And so on. And let me see, five. And then eleven. Whatever the case may be, I just want to get this thing through. Four, two, one, uh, seven. I'm done. Okay, cool. Let's run out put in some numbers here, some dates here. Okay. 
doing some random dates. Just want to get this thing through and call it a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on, something. All right, five. Four. And the seventeenth. All right, and let's run out of some. So every other person is a citizen. Yeah. Goody. Now I'm done with that. Let us just do up these two since we just since we uh, just just knock them off. Two five, and then three seven. Wow, that number the big forty one. All right, so I'm done that now. Oh, this person I do not eat, yeah. Um, I said five hundred. Cool. So this is my next table finished. All right, and what I'm just kind of randomly showing you guys stuff because it's not like um we're going to it's actually for any official thing more than just to give you guys a demonstration. So this is two tables, right? That we have in our, in our database. However, there are times when you might want to actually how should I put it now? Or should I create my third table? I should create a third table. Yeah. It's a lot of time. We can create a third table. Create. No, let's save that word. Go back. All right. I'm going to create a third table. Create a very short table. Easy, easy as cheese. And table design. I'm going to put in ID, short text still. And just two fields. Um, what are the two fields that we know? Let's for example, um, hmm, status, short text, no. Um, I want to use something else that I don't normally use. Auto number. All right, you can use auto number. And next one is. Mugshot, yeah, let me put in mugshot. Mugshot. And then this one now is going to be OLE object. OLE means object linking and embedding is where I can attach pictures to it, I suppose. So my primary key is going to be this, auto number. So I'll explain to you why. And then the ID, I don't have to have ID as primary key. Why? Because I'm going to use auto number because I want to repeat the numbers here on the ID. I want to repeat the numbers. Something came to my mind that I want to show you as well to make sure you're comfortable with shortly, shortly after this, right? So I'm going to save this table as um what should I say now? Voter data. Alright, cool. So I am going to copy and paste the ID number that I did here. Right click, select copy. Go to voter data, the down arrow here. Then click paste. Notice what happened. Let me go to a larger font again, 22. Auto number, automatically number them one to nine so far. But what I want to do is I want to repeat some of these numbers, right? Soon do the mugshot thing. All right, so I want to go A, B again, zero, zero, three. All right, and I want to go D, 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 C, zero, zero, six. Uh, all right, and let me go M, M, zero, zero, four. All right, so this is what auto number does. It automatically numbers the amount of records in sequence from one down to 12. Mugshot, I'm gonna put some pictures in here. So, right. So to do that, what I do is click on this area and right click and select insert object. So 
inside this area, I right click and select insert object. I'm gonna go and find some pictures now. So I am going to say from file and go browse. So let me see. I also have some pictures somewhere on my let's say gallery. Uh pictures, pictures here. One day I have no pictures here, yeah. All right, here's a picture of me. Okay. Put that one in, click OK. You come up with that mad turbo package. Yeah. Um, insert object, go insert another one from file. Um, browse. I'm going to select something else. Yeah. This picture. I select OK. All right. So our database is getting a lot bigger. Answer for right. Some of us insert to randomly, right? So now that we're done with that, we now need to go and add some more to this. But to do this, I want to use a form. That is what I want you to learn to do. Use a form. The third and final step in populating a database table. All right. Remember, there are three ways you can enter data table data into a table by importing, by tapping the data manually, also by using forms. What are forms? Glad you asked. Before we go to forms though, anybody have any questions so far? I know there's some persons here in the here probably eating breakfast, doing all kind of madness and not paying attention. But question, is there are there any questions, anybody? No, sir. No. All right. Well, as I'm showing you guys, database is simple. It's easy to use. It's just a lot of sequence of steps, a lot of rules you have to pay attention to, right? So over here, we have forms. And let's go form. Wizard is always easier to use. Yeah, usually easier to use. And for forms, this can work fairly well, right? So when I select form cancel, let's select form wizard. All right, you now select the type, the, the table you want to use. All right. The table I want to use is the one that says voters data, the short one. And then now I can send across, I can send them across one, one, like in this arrow here. Or if I send it across everybody one time, the double one here, so just send that across and I click next. Columnar is fine. You call it voter data form and finish. So now I'm finished now, this is what it looks like. Like a form. Then now we can start to enter some more stuff, right? ID number, status, a noisy truck in my area. Give me a second, guys. Okay, so let me can continue, all right? So if I want to enter something new, our new entrant, I can go right down to this option down here. This screen is kind of small. Let me see if I can do this so you can see. Right? The screenshot it and send it in the WhatsApp group. All right, so that's loading up, right? So this little image here, that I'm trying to, show, trying to show to you right now, right? It is just a one out of 12. So if I click on this symbol right here, little, like a play button with a little star beside it, all right, that creates a new record. So we're going to create another record, right? So create another record. I'm not going to have 13. So I'm putting ID. Let me get an ID number. Voters, I'm going to ID number. Um, CD001. So, put in CD, CD, intro. 
3 d zero zero one status is I can put a picture in there so whatever picture you want to put in right insert object bracket again from file browse and let me go find a picture from somewhere where can I find a picture those are screenshots that's some screenshots of some madness here so just mm. pick one and click OK. I'm done. So if you notice, I now have 13. I can click another one. And put um which I didn't know what I'm gonna put again now. KM002. KM002. And I'm done. All right, I don't want to put in any image for that, right? But if you notice what happens when I go to voters' data, you realize I have now 13 stuff, right? 13. But adding on some more. So you can actually enter data by using forms as well. Close this, close that. All right? So, and it's the forms over here. You can open it again, or you can open the tables again over here. All right, so that's basically how you can populate a database table. So if you understand that concept, then you know that that's the first phase. You guys, I expect you to pay attention more to the very first sequence. And that is one where you're importing data into the table back from your spreadsheet. I sent you the video link already. How to do that, I send that to you sometime earlier. I think this was it, yeah? How you can organize a spreadsheet, your spreadsheet that you're using right now to import into a database table, all right? Are there any questions? If no, if there are no questions, we're going to take a break for about 15 minutes here or so and come back at about 11.15. And then we're going to do to straight queries, queries and report. And then we are done. And the queries and report should take half the amount of time that we spent already. So if we were here for about an hour now, then queries and reports go and knock off about half, about literally 30 minutes or less. Because that's easier. The hardest part is getting the data into the database. Are there any questions, anybody? Okay. No, sir. So we're going to take a short break and